guys, in this episode we're going to learn about for loops in Objective C, which are really going to help you when you need to execute similar code or the same code over and over again for a number of times. Alright, so let's see how you do it. You can download this project in the link in the description below, or you can click on the link in the annotation on the screen. And in this video, we're going to talk about the for loop. Sometimes when you're writing code, you have a repetitive task or you're calling a method a couple of times or you're adding something up. And in this case, that's what loops are used for. So there's something called a for loop, which lets you specify statements which you can loop predetermined number of times. Let me show you. There's three parts to it, the initialization, the condition, and the increment. In initialization, what you're going to do is to declare a variable that you're going to use to keep track of how many times your loop is going for. So I'm going to use an integer called i, and I'm going to initialize that to 0. And then in the condition, this is where I specify the condition for which the loop will terminate. So I'm going to say terminate my loop when i is greater than 10. So in other words, this would read keep looping if i is less than 10. In the increment, after every single loop, how much would I increment i by? And plus plus is kind of a shorthand notation of writing something like i equals i plus 1, which just increments i by 1 every single time, by every single loop. So let's say, for example, I have an integer up here. Uh, called age and let me initialize that to zero and then in my for loop let me say age is well let me just go age plus plus so after this for loop runs what would you expect age to be well it would be 10 because in the first loop i is zero and then in the second loop i is one and it goes all the way up until the ninth loop when i is nine and then on the tenth loop i would be 10 and this condition would be false and then it would break out of the loop. So this is a way for you to be able to write any sorts of statements in here to repeat. So you wouldn't have to write it out a whole bunch of times. Now the other thing that makes for loops even more useful is the fact that you can actually use the variable i inside the loop to do something. So let me say age equals age plus i. And let me sh actually quickly show you another way to write this. An equivalent way to write this would be age plus equals i. And these two statements are equivalent. Let me just comment this one out. So what's happening here? This statement is saying for every loop, add whatever value i is to the age. So at the end of this loop, well, in the first loop, it adds 0 to 0. And the second loop, it adds 1 to 0. And then third loop, it adds 2 to 1. And then 3 to Three. I'm trying to do addition on the fly in my head, uh, but basically you kind of get the idea. For loops can also be used another way, and I know I haven't showed you guys what arrays are yet, but an array is simply, think of it as a container of objects. So if I say something like, um, let's say container of names, and let's assume that this array, okay, let me just write, name it this way. Let's assume that this array contains 10 different strings and each string represent, uh, represents a name. Another way I can use for loops is something like this. So again, I initialize my i is equal to zero at the beginning and then my condition would be, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying i begins at 0 and then I want to loop as many times as there are items in this array. So that's what this count property means. It gives me the amount of items in the array of names. And then in here I can say something like uh, my name is equal to the array of names object at index i. So remember I told you the array contains 10 different names. This method object at index returns basically the name at a position that I pass in. So in the first loop, I would be passing in zero, which would give me the first name. In the second loop, it would give me um, the name at position, the next position, and so on and so forth. Now, another way to write this is I can, you know, if I know that this array contains strings, I can go like this. 
And in this for loop, this would be equivalent to the one up here. And in this for loop, it's basically saying for each name or for each NS string in this array, assign it to a variable name. And I can do stuff with name in here. So now you can see how useful for loops are in Objective-C. For your fact of the day, did you know that Apple once made its own video game system? Neither did I. Check it out in the link below.